Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Pat Sun and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash relationship advice where OP's girlfriend did something a mother should never do. Let's begin. I found out my significant other of six and a half years has been having a year-long affair. Looking for advice. Posted by Reddit user Wes Lemons. Last said I found out that my partner has been having an affair with one of her friends for the last year or so. It was very sudden and came as a serious shock. I basically walked out as soon as I confronted her and she confirmed it, and I told her I never wanted to see or hear from her again. I've always had one rule and it's always been no sex with other people. Well, the no talking didn't last long because I texted her immediately, ranting about how she's ruined everything and all she really had to say was sorry, which seemed really empty to me. We met up on Monday so she could give me some of my stuff that I had left in hers. She wanted closure, so I went. She was surprisingly honest about everything, telling me stuff that I hadn't even figured out and answering any questions that I had. I was really cold with her and I couldn't look at her at all, and I eventually asked her if she was done repeating how sorry she was, and I left. As soon as I got home, I broke down and felt awful for how I treated her. This is someone I've loved for a long time and that I plan to marry, taking so long because I'm a student, and I still really care for her. I texted her and I apologized to her and I told her I'm here if she needs me. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! We ended up having a conversation then, and because my mind has been all over the place, I started to feel like I really miss her and that I can't imagine life without her. I told her to disregard my feelings for a minute and tell me what she wants to happen now that all of this is out in the open, and she told me that she thinks we can fix this. Basically, we were having intimacy issues for a few months before the affair, and also during it. But we were working on it and I was under the impression that things were getting better but clearly they weren't. So we discussed it for a while and I told her that there's absolutely no guarantee that I'll ever feel comfortable going back to her but that I was willing to leave the door open. We set down some ground rules if it ever does happen, like her never being able to contact him again, us going to counseling together, us being brutally honest and her accepting that I'm going to be extremely paranoid for a while. She basically thanked me for even considering it, and said that she's happy to wait for my decision. I told her it could be months, and not to expect anything until the new year at the very least. Again, she was surprisingly honest as far as I could tell. <laughs> basically, I was just looking for advice on this because it's my first time ever being cheated on. I care about her immensely, but I'm scared that I'm only considering this because it's what she wants, and that I'm not taking my own feelings into account. I know that this is all still really fresh, and that my mind could go anywhere over the next few weeks and months, but I also feel like now that this is in my head that I'm gonna stick with it and it's gonna damage my ability to get over her and recover. Am I being stupid? Is this normal? Has anyone had experiences like this before? The past week has been extremely tough for me mentally and physically. I've barely eaten since Saturday and I've already lost nearly 5 kilos in weight. I've been getting sick and having pains all over my body. Thankfully I have good friends who have already been really supportive, and I've already had an emergency counseling session in college which went well, and I'll be going back regularly for a few months. I just thought I'd share here too with like-minded people to see what you all have to say. Apologies for the really long post. TLDR, partner has been cheating on me for best part of a year. I am considering trying to fix it with her, but I don't know if I'm doing it for myself or for her. It might be too early to tell, but I am just looking for advice. Update, honestly, I'm really surprised by this community. I expected the conversation to be a bit more measured and respectful. Some of you have said some interesting things that I will absolutely take on board, but a lot of you are not helping at all by being so black and white about the situation. My ex is a human being who did a really terrible thing, but there's more to being a terrible person than that. Thank you for the supportive messages, but to be honest I've found a lot of the replies to be quite unhelpful. Well sir, if you're having a problem with our customer support, you can call 1-800-EAT-A-DICK! Wow, OP. Based on your short update and the way you answered some of the great advice you got in the comments, you really are a stupid fucking simp. Originally, I was gonna give some advice to you, young man, but it seems that I will just be wasting my time if I do. So good luck in raising Chad and Tyrone's kids in the future. And now for today's second story. 
My ex-girlfriend wants to try again. Posted by Reddit teaser Sean Mc96. My ex-girlfriend and I first got together six years ago, and from day one, we got on like two peas in a pod. Then, after two and a half years together, she fell pregnant. We had spoken about kids before, and we both wanted a family, but not after just two years together. We spoke about it a lot, asked a few of our friends that already have kids, and eventually decided to go for it. We also agreed that even if our relationship doesn't last, our child's well-being would always come first. Right before the lockdown in 2020, three weeks before the due date, we welcomed a perfect little girl and both of us were completely infatuated. It was a big adjustment, but our girl was an angel and we settled into parenthood rather quickly. Everything was going great at first but three months later, it all changed. I was working late when I got a text from my mother to tell my mum girlfriend dropped our daughter off with her while she ran some errands but four hours later she hadn't returned and now she wasn't answering her phone. I called too but she didn't answer me either. I got out of work, collected my daughter and went home to find a note from my girlfriend. She said that she couldn't handle the stress of lockdown and the baby and she just needed some time to clear her head. She also said not to call and that we would talk soon but days turned to weeks with no contact from her or anyone else other than her sister who visited her niece often, but never mentioned my girlfriend. Fast forward three years and my ex-girlfriend is slowly starting to reach out again. It was slow at first, liking photos of our girl on Instagram and the odd comment but that was it until last week. She sent me a text saying that she had seen how well our daughter and I are doing and asking if we could meet up. I was reluctant, but we agreed before our daughter was born that her well-being is what mattered the most so reluctantly, I agreed to meet for a coffee so she can see our girl but I'm having second thoughts. How do I forgive her for walking out on me and more importantly, on our daughter? Now for OP's first update. As agreed, my ex and I met up a few days ago in a local cafe, and I got there early to try and work out what I was going to say to her after three years. While I hadn't mentioned it in my original post, I had no intention of bringing our daughter along. My ex had contact numbers of my family members so she was with a co-worker, and when my ex arrived, she was a little disappointed but not all that surprised to see I was alone. The next few minutes mainly consisted of small talk before we eventually addressed the enormous elephant in the room where she had been hiding for three years of our daughter's life. She admitted that she'd had suffered a lot with postpartum depression, and she couldn't bear to show it in front of our girl. She acknowledged that leaving the way she did was wrong, but she wanted to be able to focus solely on herself while she got therapy. I asked why it took her three years to resurface. She sent a text for our daughter's first birthday but that was it, and she broke down admitting that she was so scared of what I thought of her for disappearing. In a way she was right to be scared, because while I could come to terms with being dumped, I was furious because she left our daughter. Throughout our conversation, I could tell she's grown a lot as a person over the last few years which is something. We spoke for well over an hour and when I finally got up to leave, she asked where we stood. I told her that I appreciate that she's been really trying to turn over a new leaf, but it's going to take time for me to fully move on but as a show of good faith, I showed her a video of our girl. It's about six or seven months old but it's my favorite. It's her and one of my dad's cows mooing at each other. Just before I left, I got her phone number so we can maintain a bit of proper contact rather than through social media, and I agreed to send her a couple of photos of our girl. I appreciate all the advice I got last time and I'm wondering where my ex and I go from here. My hope is that we can coexist and maintain a healthy friendship for our daughter's sake but after what happened before, it's hard to fully trust my ex. What do you guys think? Side note, two things I didn't mention to my ex. I have zero intentions of rekindling our relationship. I'm open to co-parenting if she can prove she's not going to pull another disappearing act. But that's it. I really loved her once, but I'm a different person now and that ship has well and truly sailed. At one point, I considered putting our girl up for adoption. She was about 9 months at the time. I was mentally and emotionally drained. Work was stressing me out and coming home to my daughter just didn't give me any joy as much as I love her. I was going through the process but one night, I looked in at her in her cot, she looked back at me and the look on her little face, a cute little smile and her blue eyes shining like I was her whole world. It told me that things would get better so I cancelled the adoption and never looked back. 
And now, for OP's final update. It's been a few weeks, so I thought I'd give another update regarding progress with my ex. First off, thanks to everyone for the advice and support. It's been such a huge help. So, down to business. For my ex's request, I accompanied her to a session with her therapist and she reassured me that she and my ex have made good progress, but she still has some issues to work through. Specifically, her relationship with her parents. She told me they separated and her mother had a temper, but I didn't know how bad it really was. After the session, my ex left and I hung on for a minute to ask her therapist for her opinion regarding reintroducing my daughter to my ex. She recommended holding off for now and offered me a free session to talk about it, so I'm going to see her next week. On a more positive note, my daughter started preschool two weeks ago, is already making friends and has been absolutely loving life. And I sent my ex a few photos of our girl to show some support, so things are looking up. Thanks again to everyone that has commented so far. The support I got has been incredible. Makes the struggle of raising a child alone a little better. OP I'm not gonna say whether or not you should let your ex be in your child's life again, but come on dude, she left you to do the heavy lifting. She doesn't get to come back and get away with not doing the work all parents should be putting in. OP, if I were you, I would do everything in my power to protect my daughter from any chance of this woman abandoning her again. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat Sun to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.